to another exciting episode of Organizing Your Google Life. We've been working our way through Gmail, looking at the many ways you can use it more effectively, and also customize it to suit your workflow. Things certainly have come a long way since the days when bags of mail were sent by biplane and stagecoach. Once upon a time, sorting through the mail used to be a full-time job requiring a full-time employee. These days, you can accomplish most tasks with just a click of a button, and by setting up a few filters, it's possible to have most tasks done absolutely automatically. Today we're looking at Gmail Labels, another feature which is pretty basic on the surface, although there are probably a few functions that might come as a surprise to you. In some ways, attaching labels to your emails is similar to filing them in a folder. Apply the label to the message. Later, clicking on the label will pull up the quote-unquote file where all of those messages are kept together. Simple, right? There's one major difference between labels and folders, as we traditionally understand them, and that is that you can apply more than one label to a message, effectively sorting it into two folders at once. Even if you've never heard of Gmail labels before, you're already using them. Google uses a range of what are called system labels for various purposes. The most obvious is your inbox, but you've also got spam, trash, starred, important, and a couple of others as well. Of course, these labels are associated with some of the core automatic functions of Gmail, and as such, users have less control over these. You can't delete them, for example. Most people don't know this, but there are some options for these system labels that you can control. We'll get to those in a minute or two. For now, it's enough to understand that there are both system labels and ones that you can create yourself. So let's do it. There are two, well, actually three different spots where you can easily create a new label. The first is at the bottom of your list of labels on the right hand side of the Gmail screen. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, past these system labels, all the way down, if you've got lots of labels already, you may need to click on more to reveal the whole list, and then at the very very bottom you'll see we've got options for managing labels and creating new labels. The other spot where you can create a label can be found while you're actually reading your email, which makes a lot of sense. So if I click on a message, you'll see that it pulls up this options bar, which includes a label button. We click on the label button, and similar to the one you'll find on the left-hand side of your screen, you have a list of all of your labels, and then at the bottom, we've got a create new and a manage labels button as well. Finally, from the Google Department of Redundancy Department, you can also create labels by clicking on the folder button which is conveniently located right next to the label button. Let's be clear, as far as Gmail is concerned, there is absolutely no difference between folders and labels. And as you can see, if you flip back and forth between the two, there is very little difference in the options that it provides and absolutely no difference in the list of labels slash folders um, that are available. I can only assume that Google has left the folder button here because so many people think of digital organization in terms of folders. It's pretty weird and somewhat confusing if you ask me, but there you have it. So we're going to create a label. I'm going to click on the Create Label button, go down to the Create New. From here, it really just boils down to providing a name for your label. So I'm going to keep it simple and call it a new label. Now, you'll notice I have the option to nest my label. A quick word about nesting. This is one of those areas where Google Labels behave in a manner that we normally associate with folders. You can, net, you can nest one or put one inside another, like a subfolder. A quick example of how this might be useful, you can see that I have this label here for all of my communications from my direct supervisor, John. Now, we all know that most school-related business tends to work according to school year. So next year, after I've been working here for a while, it might be useful to organize all my mess messages from John according to year, labeling this year's messages as 1213 and next year's messages as 1314, for example. This may seem like a lot of work for very little payback, but don't worry, next time I'll show you how you can do all of this work automatically by creating some filters. So we're not going to bother with nesting for the time being, I'm just going to click the Create button. If I go back, you'll notice that my new label, a new label, has been added to the list and I can just click on it to label the message. Now when I go over to the new label sort of menu over here, there's the message which I just tagged 
as a new label. Now I can very easily remove this tag just by looking at the message and clicking on the X. That will remove the label from the conversation very, very simply. The last important thing I want to show you is how to adjust some of the settings on your labels. Most of these options can easily be accessed from the menu over on this side of the screen. You just mouse over the particular label. Now notice you don't get these options for the system labels, but if I go over one that I've created and click on this little twisty, it opens up an option box where I can adjust some of the features of that label. First of all, I can give the label a color, which might be useful if you're a very visual thinker and you like to have nice color-coded reminders. Um, this can be pretty useful. You can also remove colors from here as well. You have the option to show in the label list. Now, this is pretty useful. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. I have a label down here for our school's annual photo contest, where I sorted all of the mail and all of the submissions from kids who sent me photos. Now, this photo contest happens at the very, very beginning of the year, and then it's over. So for me, it's pretty useful to come over here and just hide this label, because it's not going to be much use to me for the rest of the year. In that way, I can keep my label list nice and clean and access the stuff that I need to access sort of more efficiently. You can also see right down here that you actually have the option to hide the messages themselves from your message list as opposed to just the labels from the label list. This can be pretty useful once you've set up some automatic filters to do your sorting for you and maybe you just want those messages to bypass your inbox altogether. Finally, you can see right down here at the bottom uh, you also have the opportunity to edit the label, which is basically changing its name or perhaps its location. You can also remove the label, and this is another spot where you can add sub-labels and get into the whole nesting thing if you so desire. Okay, the very, very last thing I'm going to show you involves digging a little deeper into the Manage Labels menu. Uh, you can find the Manage Labels menu in a couple of different places. Again, you can scroll down past all of your labels and here's the manage label button right here or alternately you can go over to your gear and go into settings and you'll notice that labels is one of the tabs on your settings menu now the first thing you'll probably notice is that a lot of the functions are, are ones that we've already talked about the show and label list the show and message list um, but you get to see all of your labels and all of their settings in kind of a broad view um, and also you can adjust some of those settings for the system labels, which you couldn't do from the previous menu. M the main difference in this particular menu is this show in IMAP feature over here. Now, what IMAP is, is a way for Gmail to push mail out to an external device or perhaps an external mail client like Outlook or uh, Thunderbird. Um, so this is actually pretty handy if you want to stop certain sorts of mail from going out to your device. You may find it useful to not send your spam folder to your iPhone, for example, or to not send your trash folder out to your iPad. That's about all I want to say about syncing to devices right now. That could be the subject of a whole separate tutorial later on. For now, I think it's pretty safe to say that you know pretty much everything you need to know about labeling your messages and managing those labels. It really gets fun, interesting, and efficient once we start creating filters in order to do a lot of this stuff automatically. We'll start to get into that with the next tutorial. Thanks for hanging in with me so far. I hope you've been enjoying the videos and hopefully nine or ten minutes at a time we've been bringing your communication skills into the 21st century. See you later.